Well, it's still early days in the fourth season of life here at Plymouth Argyle, but we do find ourselves on top of the Premier League. We're going to try and stay there with a Merseyside double as we take on Everton and then defending champions Liverpool. And then we'll see if we do anything on deadline day because we're £40,000 over our wage budget. <laughs> Oops. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 32 of The Wayne Train here on Sean Does FM with Plymouth Argyle. I hope you're doing well and come up today as I said a Merseyside double. First up we do travel to Bramley Mordock Stadium to take on Everton and off the back of that we take on Liverpool back at home park. The first game that you'll see back there in a little while and also hopefully we can try and fix our finances in and around transfer deadline day because they're not very good but if you're looking forward to that coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but the reason those finances are the way they are was discussed at the start of yesterday's episode, where we did recap our business in the transfer window before taking on Manchester United on the opening day of the season at Old Trafford. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner. Thankfully, despite the fact we were on the back foot for most of that game, we picked up a 3-1 win coming back from 1-0 down. And as you can see off the back of that, our first game at home park in a long time against the Tottenham Hotspur team who did just the point and slot as their new manager and we thumped them that was off the back of them beating Liverpool on the opening day of the season by five goals to nil and this was a very dominant performance albeit one where the scoreline did get bloated out by some good set piece execution from us but Samadzic there gets that one just past Vicario off the back of a Wayne train assist to give us an early 1-0 lead that was a scoreline going into the second half but then set piece FC in that half first up it was Parola from a corner in the mystery Aaron Kunda came off the bench and he really had a good impact there Diamonde with a shot which comes off the post Pizarro puts that one home then we go far post and Parola puts that one away actually that first goal might have been Diamonde but both our centre backs did score in this one and then Pizarro gets again at the far post puts that one away so four goals from set piece in the second half, both our centre-backs doing a really good job, including the new signing in Diamonde. That means he's got two goals in two games, and we pick up a very nice 5-0 win there, as I said, over a team under a new manager in Unslot, who did beat Liverpool on that opening day of the season. So that was a very good result, as I said, and it does mean with two wins from our first two games against some decent teams in Spurs and Manchester United. We are top of the table, joint with Fulham but quite a way above them because of that good goal differential. Hopefully we can stay there in these two games coming up in today's episode. Definitely hoping we can pick up some points against Everton. Things might be a little bit tougher when we do take on Liverpool, albeit if Spurs can beat them, maybe that one's a bit more winnable than you'd expect. And also, as you can see there, quite a few of our players have started off the season well, as you'd expect with those two wins that we have picked up, including Pizarro off the back of that goal. He scored off the bench yesterday against Man United. Got those two against Spurs. Currently the top goal scorer in the Premier League. Not too bad for the backup to the Wayne train. And also Nestri and Kunda on free assists. He might be a player who earns himself some more game time shortly, albeit Osama Salawi should be back off the back of today's episode from that big injury that he did suffer in pre-season. But the only real change off the back of that game that we played yesterday in terms of team selection going to today's episode is that Serginho Dest these days is back from that suspension, which did keep him out of that first game of the season at Manchester United, so it does mean now pretty close to full strength. The only change, as I said, Sarawi would probably be back in there over Facundo Farias, but otherwise we're at full strength. In terms of our starting 11, the other change we might usually make is that we'd have someone like Balumi on the bench over Morgan Whitaker, but otherwise, as I said, at full strength, and hopefully can pick up a decent result against an Everton team who so far have won one and lost one. That loss did come 3-0 against Liverpool, so that's interesting after they beat Brentford 5-0 on the opening day of the season. So, so far, it does look like teams struggling on the road, doing a lot better at home. Hopefully, we can turn that upside down here as we do take on Everton. We'll come back shortly and see what their team looks like and try and stay unbeaten in our first three Premier League games this season. And here are the team sheets for this one. They are Everton. They are going with a 4-2-3-1 off the back of that 3-0 defeat in a Merseyside derby. But as you saw before, 5-0 win over Brentford prior. 
They could be a bit dangerous here at home. There's our team. As we did run through before, it's pretty much the same as it was yesterday. But Serginho Dest is back in there at right back. And hopefully we can pick up a win and stay on top of the Premier League table. And it's taken about 15 minutes here for the first highlight in this game. But it does look like it is going to be in our favour. Serginho Dest there does find Samadzic from that frown. We try and put that one there far post. I think that was for Facundo Farias. But unfortunately, he can't quite get on the end of it. Everton there for a chance on the counter attack. But thankfully... Alex Scott does win that one back for us, as you'd expect Dorbeard. He's actually the deep line playmaker, so maybe not more of an effort there from a ball-winning midfielder. But thankfully, we do get the ball back here. Samadzic is back on it. Was very good in that first game yesterday against Man United, as was Diamonde. But he gets robbed there from Dominic Calvert-Lewin. A big chance there, but thankfully, he puts that one over Diamonde. It's probably his worst touch so far in a Plymouth Argyle shoot, but thankfully, it's still nil all. And our next highlight's about 10 minutes off the back of that previous one. We almost give the ball away there yet again. In fact, we do. And now Talis Magno does get in behind here for Everton. Tight angle does force a good save there out of Tobias, our centre-backs today. And just our defence in general looking a little bit shaky off the back of two really good games prior, which is a bit concerning. But so far, Everton are the team well and truly on the front foot. Wasn't expecting this off the back of that great win over Spurs. But thankfully, we deal with the danger from that corner. Albeit Nikola Ilyev. On an orange injury, might play things safe now, especially with no extra depth. With Good Johnson no longer at the club, a bando can come on for him. But we're on the back foot and locked up at nil all with 10 minutes left in the first half. And just making our way into added time here in this first half as Dominic Calvert-Lewin's being forced off for Everton. So both teams missing their main strikers up front, at least in terms of them. We've, of course, still got the Wayne train, but late free kick here to Everton. Garner had a big target there to try and put that one, but thankfully it does just come off of the crossbar and thankfully we get into half time here still locked up at nil all but as you saw before those stats Everton well and truly bettering us so far in this game Ethan Lear can come on for Serginho Dest on a yellow card and a 6.4 and unfortunately Ben Wayne's also on a 6.4 Damien Pizarro off the back of a hot start to the season he can come on for him we'll give the guys a bit of a rev up here and hopefully see a response as we get the second half underway still locked up at nil all and an early highlight here in the second half, and it might be in our favour of throwing here inside of the final third. Samadzic gets in behind there. Great chance. Hits that one with his left foot, but unfortunately denied by the woodwork. And it is still nil all, but encouraging signs early in the second half. And just made our way up to the hour mark, and I think it's now time for our third sub in this game. Samadzic, despite that good chance he did have early in the second half just before, is on a 6.4. So Morgan Whitaker can come on for him. And only a few minutes off the back of that, there is now a corner down the other end for Everton. They float this one far post. We've been quite good from set pieces, as you saw in that Tottenham game. But so are Everton. Onana there scores his first goal this season and makes it 1-0 to Everton. And based on stats in the first half in particular, they probably deserve that off the back of that. We'll bring on Aaron Kunda for Farias, also struggling on a 6.4. Also, Laird and Som have picked up yellow cards, but they put that one far post into a swarm of bodies. We can't deal with it, and we go 1-0 down. And not too long off the back of that opening goal to Everton, we are now down the other end for a throw, and we pick out Aaron Kunda fresh off the bench. He will find Pizarro back to goal. Picks out Obando. Nice turn there and buries that one bottom right corner with his right foot. That's very good to see for a player who probably wouldn't have got this much football without good Johnson having left for Barcelona in yesterday's episode, but that's good to see the young Ecuadorian can score goals. Aaron Kunda with some good impact as well, and Pizarro, some smart play there, good touch, one touch to set up that goal, get that one past Jal Virginia in goal today for Everton, and we make it one all with 15 minutes left. And we're just about to make our way now into injury time in this game. We've been well and truly the team on the back foot in this one, but somehow it's one all. To be fair, that's a result. I think I'd take considering how badly we have been playing. We'll just try here late to play for set pieces and also be more expressive and see if that helps us out at all. Because of course, set pieces were quite lethal in that Tottenham Hotspur game so far. Not playing for set pieces here at Plymouth Argyle. Maybe we should be, but that's a little bit of a disappointing result, I think, off the back of those first two results, those good wins over Man United and Spurs would have fought off the back of those. We could beat a team like Everton, but to be fair, they were all over us for most of that game. But thankfully, a late goal to Obando off the back of that one to Onana from that corner does mean that we pick up a point and do stay on top of the Premier League table for now. Hopefully, we can go back to home park and pick up a good result like we did in our last game last season at Anfield as we take on Liverpool. And before we can get to that Liverpool game, we have got our Champions League fixtures for this season. Of course, it's going to be our first one in the pinnacle of European football, our first season at all, in fact, in Europe 
in the save. And to be fair, our first couple of games, they do look very winnable, even though they are away from home. We take on Antwerp of Belgium and Olympiakos of Greece. Off the back of that, things do get a bit more interesting. RB Leipzig and Fenerbahce, then Valencia, they could be a little bit tricky. In our last three games as well, they do look difficult. Monaco, Atletico Madrid, of course, they have Marco Stamanek. Could be a Kiwi versus Kiwi battle there with the Wayne train for us. And then into Milan in our last game of the league phase. But hopefully, based on that schedule, we can pick up some points early and should be able to make our way through the knockouts, albeit we'll be interested to see if we can make the top eight and skip that first knockout playoff round. And going forward a couple more clicks before we do get to the second game of today's episode, we do take on Liverpool. First up, we've had the draw for the third round of the EFL Cup. Now, the beef here, this one actually gets played on transfer deadline day, so I'm going to have to show you guys the highlights from this game because I don't think we're going to focus too much this season on the Carabao Cup in particular while we are taking part in the Champions League, but it's a replay from one of our latter stages of the FA Cup last season. We take on Hull City. That does look like a game that we should be winning, despite the fact we'll be rotating our team quite heavily. And also, a bit of a transfer update going in to deadline day because one of our players has requested a transfer, and that is Ethan Led. So we are offering him out, and we'll see if that does go through prior to deadline day. It might mean we need to bring someone in who can play both sides at left back and right back just in case we do need that extra cover on the bench albeit the likes of Jacob Graves and Sebastian Hausner are still there we could just put them on the bench and they can cover those roles while also covering both centre-back positions but it is quite nice to have someone a little bit more quicker than our centre-backs can be if we do need a bit of pace down those flanks Ethan Lee might be someone on his way out the door on transfer deadline day hopefully we can get that 12.5 million and that might just be enough for us to try and sign someone and also fix that wage budget considering he is currently getting paid £30,000 a week. But we're about to take on Liverpool in the second game of today's episode, our last one. Before deadline day, these guys have been just a touch up and down so far this season. As I said before, they did lose to Tottenham in the opening game. That one was away from home since then. Some convincing wins at Anfield over Everton and Southampton. Of course, late last season on the final day, we picked up a 3-2 win over them, which without it, we would not have Champions League football for this season. Despite that, they did still pick up the Premier League title because Newcastle did beat Manchester City. But this is a very interesting rematch off the back of that game where they did blow a 2-0 lead. Hopefully, we can perform a bit more like we did in that Spurs game prior to today's episode and not like in that Everton one where we were well and truly on the back foot. If that happens here, I don't think we'll be walking away with any points at all, but hopefully we can do something decent here and stay on top of the Premier League table, but easier said than done, as we take on Liverpool from home park. And here are the team sheets for the second game of today's episode in terms of us easy peasy, exactly the same as we were for that Everton game, so Gino Destel it right back, so we are exactly the same, and in terms of Liverpool, they are going with a 4-3-3, their big signing in the off-season was Bubakar Kamara, he's playing a in that defensive midfield, almost halfback role, I'd assume, with a 4 3 3 in that Liverpool team. But hopefully, we can get back on track here in front of our home park faithful and stay on top of the Premier League. And a very early highlight here, and it might be in our favour, a free kick which Diamonde is going to take, hopefully, but better than he was in that Everton game where he did make a couple of mistakes. A bit surprising off the back of two really good performances prior, but thankfully, we are still on the attack. Various plays that one back to Alex Scott, runs backwards, thankfully Som does get that ball and gets just in behind the Liverpool defence, good strike there, but unfortunately had to put that one over of an outstretched Liverpool defender's leg, and it does go over the bar, but an early chance, but unfortunately still nil all. And we're now just making our way past the half hour mark, and so far we've been the only team in this game to do anything based on stats, but to be fair, this is only the second highlight, and Parola plays that one forward to Scott, and then Farias there tried to put that one into the mixer. Thankfully, we did get that one back through. Ilyev took on a shot and lets one rip, and it does actually force Alison Becker into tipping that one out for a corner. We can be quite lethal from these as Farias puts this into the mixer, but unfortunately, Diamonde there gets that one a bit too far out to try and get a shot on target there in Liverpool. Do look like they're going to deal with that danger, so despite the fact we're so far the team who have been on the front foot, it's still nil all. And getting quite late now in the first half, and it is now a corner to Liverpool as they finally have to do something in this game. They go far post looking for their new signing in Bubakar Kamara. He plays that one over for Diogo Jota. Gets a really good chance and did beat Tobias, but thankfully that one does come off the post. That's the first chance that Liverpool have had in this game, to be fair, not too bad at the 40-minute mark, albeit 
we do see the restart hopefully can make our way out of defense safely as Diamonde plays that one out to Gutierrez and to Beefy. A good pass there to Farias who can make his way into space but that is a poor pass and Gutierrez gets that one back for the red. Somni, a good tackle on Gakpo but they do keep the ball. We hit that one clear but Liverpool are still on the attacks. They're finishing off the first half here with a bit of a flourish. Now Gakpo on the ball might have been offside but play does continue. McAllister with a shot. I think that takes a deflection from one of our defenders and it finds its way into the bottom right corner and offside from Gekpo before. So off the back of that, we're going to demand more because that actually feels a bit harsh off the back of what had been up until those last couple of highlights. A pretty good first half against this Liverpool team. That shot from McAllister definitely takes a big deflection off of Serginho Dest, but unfortunately still makes its way into the bottom right corner. And it looks like we're going to the sheds here. One nil behind, which as I said, does just feel a little bit harsh. Now Farias is on a 6.3 and Serginho Dest on a 6.4. So I think both those players will be coming off at half time. Ethan Led or Dest at right back. That might be his last appearance in an Argyle shoot. If you're wondering why he's still playing, Mosquera did pick up an injury, unfortunately. But of course, he's not usually in the squad. So didn't bring that one to you. But also Irin Kunda can come on for Farias having had a pretty good start to the season so far, and we'll give the guys a bit of a rev up here at halftime, to be fair. Haven't been playing too badly, but hopefully we can just step things up a little bit in the second half and try and turn around this 1-0 deficit. And about to make our way towards the hour mark, so far no highlights in this second half, but Samad Zitch out there is on a 6.4, so yet again, Morgan Whitaker can come on for him. And about 10 minutes on from that previous substitution, we are going to make our next couple. Morgan Whitaker, the brief that actually went down to a red heart, which is a bit concerning. But players who are down to red hearts are both our defensive midfielders. So we'll take them off. Both our strikers actually not doing too well today on 6.4s. But we'll get some fresh legs on for Som and for Scott. That does mean that Randall and Bischoff, they can come on. They'll be all our subs used with 20 minutes left once it actually goes through. Because just realizing there, Som hasn't come off for some reason. We'll just sort this out with only 18 minutes left now. But they'll be all our subs used. And we are still 1-0 behind. And just making our way towards the last 10 minutes of this game, and thankfully a loose touch there from a Liverpool attacker as they were trying to get on the front foot. So far, this game's actually still been pretty even despite the fact we've done not much off the back of that impressive first 35 or so minutes. But a chance for us here to play out from the back in their Parola. Picks out Randall some fresh legs off of the bench. Plays that one for Ilya. And now Nestri Kunda does get in behind. Does not to take on the shot, but will square it for the Wayne train. It's a goal that's been set up in the A-League, and that one makes it 1-0 with only 10 minutes left, and thankfully, we might find a way, just like against Everton, to get something out of this game, and Nestor Erin Kunda, who surprisingly only picked up one assist when on loan at Ipswich Town last season, that's already his fourth in the Premier League this season, nice square there for the Wayne train off the back of a good ball fall from Ilyev, and we're right back in this game now, with only a couple of minutes left, we make it 1-0, just as Liverpool here, are about to have a throw in. We might just put Tom Bischoff here on to defend to make sure that this highlight might not take place. But ideally, we can try and push for a result off the back of this. We'll also go back to positive just to see if that does cut out that highlight. Thankfully, it does. So now we will chuck Bischoff back on to support and also might go back attacking for the latter stages of this game as well. But a chance for us here to potentially try and grab a winner as we make our way into four minutes of added time to be for Liverpool. Slightly on the front foot, a couple more shots on target than we have had. But a very late free kick here in our favour. Bischoff takes that one short looking for the Wayne train, but unfortunately can't quite find him. And now Florian Wurtz does just get in behind there. Who's trying to mark him? It is Bischoff and to be fair, does really well. And now good here as it goes back there to Parola. Hopefully we do things smart here at the back. Grealish these days at Liverpool. That's another funny transfer that did go through off the back of Mo Salah leaving for Saudi Arabia. But thankfully... We do just keep that ball at the back. Now, Alison Becker plays that one to Coop Miners. It's a terrible back pass, and the Wayne train takes it round. Alison Becker, he picks up a double and might have single handedly led us to a win here over the defending champions for the second time in a row in the Premier League. Off the back of that, we're definitely going to start time wasting and lowering that tempo. Also, tell our goalkeeper to slow down the pace and also maybe distribute to our fullbacks as well. As the centre backs, we're going to play with a mid block as well and chuck Bischoff on to defend as well as our wing backs. But that is big late impact from the Wayne Tranker. To be fair, when we made those last couple of subs, was only on a 6.4. Nestor Irinkunda did set up his first goal, but that 
There's some terrible work at the back from Liverpool. Not too sure there what Coop Miners is going to be for you. That might have been helped out by Whitaker down that right hand side, putting a good press there so we couldn't play that one across to Liverpool's left hand side. But thankfully, the Wayne Train pinches that one and takes it around Alison Becker to put it away. And two Wayne Train goals, his first two of the season here at Plymouth Argyle, do mean we pick up a 2 1 win over Liverpool. And to be fair, 10 points from those first four games which did on paper look quite tricky considering they're against Man United, Spurs, Everton and these guys. That's a pretty good collect from our first month in the Premier League. And from here, we should get a couple more easier fixtures, hopefully, and might be able to try and stay on top of the Premier League for a little while longer. But that is a very good win, despite the fact we weren't anywhere near our best. We do pick up a 2-1 win, still haven't played up to the levels of that Tottenham game in today's episode, but that is a very nice result, especially having gone 1-0 down just prior to halftime. The Wayne Train is the hero, and he keeps us on top of the Premier League there, making sure we pick up a 2-1 win over Liverpool. So a big performance there from the Wayne Train back at home park. Maybe that's where he needs to get his form back after a bit of an injury-interrupted season last season, but that does mean we do stay on top of the Premier League despite the results that did come in later that match day, and also between Aston Villa and Bournemouth on the Sunday, we are about to get stuck in a two transfer deadline day. Apparently, we're going to sign Lionel Messi from Inter Milan. Not too sure about that, albeit for £425,000, it is quite tempting, but he is 39 years old. That might not be the best idea, but the big thing to keep an eye on here is Ethan Laird. Still no bids coming for him, but he is transfer listed, so we'll see if we get rid of him and what we can then do with whatever we have left in the transfer budget once we do sort out that wage, because that is the big issue, because until we let go of Ethan Lear, we can't really offer a contract to any players, and also the small matter of that EFL Cup tie against Hall City on this match day, hopefully with a rotated team, we can still win that, we'll come back with any transfer business, and also the highlights from that game against Hall City. And we've just made our way to the end of transfer deadline day, and to be for all the action in terms of that did happen late on, so before then, we took on Hall City in our first game this season, in the Carabao Cup in the first half, about halfway through Aaron Kunda, yet another assist to set up Morgan Whitaker. But unfortunately, a pretty harsh penalty given against Jacob Graves late did mean that Anderson put it away. But thankfully, once we went to the penalty shootout, his first effort was saved. And Nikola Ilyev did give us a 1-0 advantage early, albeit Bella did bring it back to one all. And then Samadzic looks there for that bottom left corner. But Ingram makes a save here. I was getting a bit worried, but thankfully then for Hall City, Kilkenny goes straight down the middle and Cooper reads it, then the Wayne Train puts his one away, so back in front with a scoreline of 2-1, and then Mike Cooper yet again with a save, he came up massive for us in the latter stages of that shootout, for some reason they don't show the winning penalty, which was scored by John Buckley off of the bench for Bischoff, but thankfully we do pick up a win there in our first game in the Carabao Cup, albeit a lot closer than you might expect, but it's good to see our rotation players can do a decent job, albeit bit concerning that our two strikers who came in for the Wayne Train and Ilyev didn't perform too well, but thankfully Aaron Kunda still doing a really good job for us at left wing. He might actually be in for a start soon in the Premier League, apart from the fact that Sarawi is back from injury and did get some late minutes in this game coming on for Nestri, but Nestri is certainly a player knocking on the door of the first team, especially while Sarawi does come back from injury for Kundo Farias so far. Hasn't been performing too well, so that might be something that we do sort out going into our next game. As you can see, that might be the team that we put out for our next game. You will see there a new face. That is Diogo Spencer. He came in on transfer deadline day in the last 30 minutes on loan from Benfica. He is being paid £10.75,000 a week, so obviously it does mean we did get rid of Ethan Lear, but he's a player with two and a half star current ability and three and a half star potential. Quite similar, but we did get him in on loan just because we did not find time to sign someone on a permanent, and that is because Ethan Lear left us with one hour to go on transfer deadline day for a fee of £12 million rising up to £14 million. So to be fair, that's actually quite a bit of money for a player that we did sign for £9.5 million back in our first season up in the Premier League, and he has gone to Southampton, one of our divisional rivals, but seeing as he didn't want to be here, we'll take that money, and what that does mean is we have sorted out that wage budget a lot better than it was come the start of today's episode, £4 million in that transfer budget, and now £67,000 spare per week, so it does mean those finances off the back of signing it was Mana Monday as well 
as Alex Scott and more big names in yesterday's episode. Uh, and they are pretty good, and our squad balance is also quite nice as well. Potentially would have been nice to try and sign an extra striker maybe, but doing pretty well at the moment, still scoring the most goals in the Premier League. Hopefully that does continue, but that will do it for today's episode. A little bit of late business there on transfer deadline day, and thankfully we are still on top of the Premier League, and it's quite good as well off the back of a tricky first month. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back tomorrow, and I think obviously we have to play our first game in the Champions League here at Plymouth Argyle. It is going to be quite an easy one, though, you'd think, on paper as we take on Antwerp, albeit it is away from home, so it could potentially be a touch tricky, but still, that's a game I'd like to think that we can win. And off the back of that, a big one yet again in the Premier League as we take on Manchester City. Those guys struggling mid-table early stages, hopefully at home part. We can pick up another big win and keep ourselves near the top of the Premier League table. So they'll be coming up in tomorrow's episode. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.